Lando Norris, ever since his arrival into Formula 1, has had much hype surrounding him to the point of him being overhyped to a certain degree. I certainly used to think that Lando, after his first season in F1, which was good but nothing special, was a bit overrated, but has proven me and many wrong since the beginning of the 2020 season as he has evolved into a superb Formula 1 driver and has lived a lot more up to the hype and expectation that came with the Brit. And when you look at his resume before he entered Formula 1, most of his hype is justified. But after the last couple years of great performances and results, there is still much speculation as to how good, compared to his peers, Lando Norris really is. Which is what in today's video I am going to give my take on how good is Lando Norris compared to the top drivers in Formula 1. And also realistically, given how good I believe he is, what can he accomplish in Formula 1? We'll get into that in just a moment guys, but make sure firstly to smash the like button on this video and don't forget as well to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Now let's get into it and start by looking at Lando's F1 career so far. Year 1 was a good first step into the top tier of motorsport with a few good performances in a year of resurgence for the McLaren team, with Carlos Sainz, his teammate for the year, leading the team to 4th place in the championship. I think most people would agree that Sainz was quite clearly better than Norris in 2019, but the gap between the two certainly closed in Norris's sophomore year, with Lando grabbing his first F1 podium and his results became much more consistent, but was still just not quite as good as Carlos Sainz, but the fight between teammates was much closer. Obviously, Carlos Sainz left for Ferrari at the end of 2020, but... When you compare Norris and Sainz and how they performed since Carlos went and joined the Ferrari team, I would honestly say Norris is better just about than Sainz. The main reason behind me saying that is because Lando Norris definitely made another step up in 2021 and was without a doubt one of the best drivers last season and has continued this year performing at a very high level despite the McLaren car's pace dipping quite a lot compared to 2021 and with Sainz despite him just beating out teammate Charles Leclerc in 2021 by a few points this year we have seen that Leclerc is still a league above the Spaniard former's temporary class is permanent as they say and after what has been a underwhelming season for Sainz we have seen clear evidence this season that Carlos is not quite an elite F1 driver and that definitely makes his stock fall. Meanwhile, since Carlos left McLaren, I think Lando's results and performances have been more impressive considering the weaker team and car he has had since 2020. And I believe if Norris and Sainz were teammates now, that Lando would just about come out the winner. Carlos's replacement to Maka, Daniel Ricciardo, has been without doubt not as good as we think he can be, but Lando has been clearly clear of Ricardo since Danny Rick joined. And despite Ricardo's at times very poor performances, it has been very impressive what Lando has done in the same car. Now, you would, given what Sainz and Ricardo have done in the last few years, think that Lando, being the better driver out of the three in the last couple of years, would see Norris very close to the top of F1. Well, not so fast with that assumption. You see, I have my own separate tiers dividing up the current Formula 1 grid. The greater your performances for a more consistent period of time over the last three years is what for me determines the best from the worst. In the top tier of drivers, there is currently only three drivers occupying that space, being Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. These three, even since 2019, have been, in my opinion, consistently the best performers on the grid. Hamilton and Verstappen especially climbed to unbelievable levels in 2021, which keeps them first and second. Leclerc can sometimes straddle the line between Tier 1 and 2, but this season has been truly brilliant from him, which keeps him in. Now, the second tier is full of some very good drivers that have had good, consistent results over the last three years, but just not as good as the top three. In this tier, we have the following drivers in no particular order. 
Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel, Lando Norris, Carlos Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo, Sergio Perez, George Russell, Pierre Gasly and Valtteri Bottas. So who out of that group is Lando Norris better than? I would definitely put him above Valtteri Bottas who is probably at the bottom of this tier but still deserves to be in this one as his performances against Lewis Hamilton for Mercedes were pretty good considering Hamilton is the GOAT. I'd put him ahead of Gasly due to the improvement Norris has made since 2021 to his race performances especially and I believe Norris is the better driver than Pierre in his overtaking ability. I would though probably put Gasly ahead of Norris on single lap pace as Pierre proved in 2021 despite racing with a car not as quick as the McLaren just how incredible his qualifying pace is. Next up is Sergio Perez who is having an amazing 2022 season winning the Monaco Grand Prix and was thought to be a genuine title contender not too long ago. Overall though, despite Perez being at his peak in 2022, Norris is the quicker driver over a single lap, not something that Perez is still great at at a consistent level despite his 2022 heroics. Much tougher to come to the conclusion as to who is stronger in a race situation between the two as Perez is incredibly consistent with pace and managing tyres, but Norris is the better racer, so I'd have to say they are pretty much equal on that front. Due to Norris having the edge on single lap pace though, Norris just about takes it. I've already explained why I believe he's better than Sainz and Ricardo. so what about George Russell, Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel? Alonso and Vettel have had great careers, but we must compare those two to Lando based on the last couple years and based on those years, I would put Norris ahead of Vettel as Seb, despite doing pretty well in an average at best Aston Martin, has not quite been as consistently good as Lando. Norris has had a faster car since 2020, but I think the level of performance from him we have seen since that year has been higher than Vettel, who we occasionally see glimpses of his old brilliant self. It is though pretty hard to compare him to Fernando Alonso because despite Alonso not having a great 2021, considering how talented he is, has been consistently superb in 2022, but has suffered a multitude of issues holding his results back. I do believe though some of his 2021 results were due to taking a two-year break from the series, and the Alonso we have seen so far in 2022 is the real Fernando Alonso, and given that this year's Alpine is not quite as good as the McLaren of last year when Norris was putting in all of those great performances, I will put Alonso ahead of Norris right now. As for comparing Norris to fellow Brit George Russell, this is a pretty hard one because up until the end of 2021, Russell was in a shitbox whilst Lando was racing for an infinitely better team and much quicker team. From what I've seen of Russell in 2022, his performances, especially compared to his goat of a teammate, have been very impressive indeed. So based on current events... I will put Russell ahead of Norris for the time being, but I will admit more evidence is needed to determine who is clearly the stronger driver here. So all in all, I have Lando Norris right now as the sixth best driver in Formula 1 behind Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, George Russell and Fernando Alonso. This puts Norris in a position similar to another British driver who used to race in F1 named Jensen Button. The reason I bring up Jensen is because I believe Lando is going to have a similar career. You see, Jensen Button was a very good driver who had many great performances and great race wins in his time. But there was, for the strong majority of his F1 career, a small group of drivers that were just better than him. Whether it be back in the mid-2000s when you had Michael Schumacher, Kimi Raikkonen, Fernando Alonso and arguably Juan Pablo Montoya just too good for him or back in the early 2010s the peak of his career when you had Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso and maybe Mark Webber if you want to have that argument that were just too good. Button had years in his career where he would outperform an Alonso or a Raikkonen or even his teammate at the time Lewis Hamilton but to outperform all of them in those respective eras it took a lot of things falling into place for that to happen. 
namely an incredibly quick Braun F1 car in 2009 to win his only world championship. Don't get me wrong, he still performed at an incredibly high level that year, especially in the second half of the season, in a severely underdeveloped car to seal the deal in Brazil, but the pace of the car in the first half of the season was the key to that success. Now, obviously, to win a championship, you have to have an amazingly quick car. Seasons like 2012, where we had Fernando Alonso dragging a boat almost to a world title, isn't really the norm in Formula 1. But with Lando Norris, that is ultimately with what I described about Jensen Button's career, what I see happening for him at the very best. There will be the odd year here or there where he performs better than a George Russell or a Charles Leclerc, and maybe even a Max Verstappen. But at the end of the day, 80 to 85% of the time, these three will be the top three drivers in Formula 1, ahead of Lando, of course, once Hamilton and Alonso have retired. And the only way Norris is beating all three in a single year to a world championship is with the best car on the grid, as even in a car equally as quick as, say, a Verstappen or Leclerc, I don't see Norris as good enough to win those battles. Overall, I put Lando Norris down as someone who could be a future world champion rather than a champion in waiting such as Charles Leclerc, as I think Norris really will need a very quick car to help him more so than say Leclerc or Verstappen need that for their overall results and performances. If I am right though that Norris's career will turn out that way very similar to Jensen Button, that is still a great career to have. Taking a look here at Jensen's stats, 90% of racing drivers would be very happy with a career like this. So this is not a dig or a criticism of this type of career path. But how will Lando Norris's F1 career develop between now and, say, the end of the decade? Will there be a chance at a first world title? I'm not sure those chances are as great as we would hope, because as you may know, Lando Norris is contracted to McLaren until the end of 2025. A McLaren team that has been very disappointing since the beginning of the new era of F1. Given the progress that was made from the dire season in 2018 until the end of 2021, McLaren just needed to get the new regulations right with their car design to fully become, once again, a top Formula 1 team. But it just didn't materialise. Now I do believe between now and 2025, McLaren will improve on this year's car. I don't think this year's performance is indicative of how good they are but the climb to possible championship glory for them has become much steeper than before i will be doing a video probably on mclaren at the end of the season but after the failure to convert their great work prior to 2022 into something more like the mclaren team of even 10 to 12 years ago i think the ship has now sailed for mclaren being a championship winning team unless they partner up with a new manufacturer in the future such as audi rather than just being a customer of Mercedes or another existing manufacturer. But if McLaren do improve the next couple years and set themselves back to where they were in 2021, then Lando Norris will see himself grab a few podiums and maybe win a race or two until his contract ends, which is good, but not enough for what Norris probably deserves. Will Lando, though, actually leave McLaren at the end of 2025 for passengers new? Well, realistically, if he was to leave, where would he go? He won't be going to Red Bull as that is Max Verstappen's team. I don't see him ever going to Ferrari as it just isn't a good fit, even if Leclerc is no longer in Maranello, leaving Mercedes as the only viable option. This will depend, though, on what Lewis Hamilton decides to do with when he is retiring from Formula 1, as Norris would ideally need Lewis to retire just as Lando's contract finishes, but if Lewis's retirement came at the end of 2024 instead, then the vacancy at Mercedes could end up being filled by Charles Leclerc for 2025. The only other options after that is any other team that somehow has become a front-running team, such as an Alpine or an Aston Martin. But we have no idea if that's actually going to happen. In my view, Lando Norris will sign a new contract at McLaren and stay with the team until 2028 or 2029, but if he does decide to leave McLaren, it won't be for Red Bull, Ferrari or Mercedes, but rather a team like Alpine if they become a front-running team, or an Aston Martin team 
that hasn't really unlocked their potential or potentially a Sauber team that is being run by Audi after 2026. With him staying at McLaren, in my opinion, until the end of the decade, all we're going to see from Lando is more podiums and great performances and maybe the odd race win, but Lando won't ever be a title contender. Not because he's not good enough, but because McLaren will not return to the very top of the sport. Certainly not for quite a while. And if Lando Norris wants to achieve what a lot of people out there think is possible, which is championship glory, leaving McLaren when the time is right and when the opportunity rises at the right team will be the key to any future title success. But let me know in the comments section down below, guys. How do you think Lando Norris's career will play out? How good do you think he really is? And compared to the drivers that I compared him to, do you disagree or agree with what I had to say? Let me know in the comments. But guys, until my next video, it has been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.